Now to gain precise control over how material is deployed on the surface of given geometries, we have what's called the UVW map. In the modifier stack, you can pull down to where you find UVW map. UVW map allows you to adjust the tiling and the scale of material as it's placed onto the surface. You see initially as this is placed, the pattern is a kind of moire and all messed up now. And uh, that's because by default it's placing the material as planar and in addition it's currently placing it as real world map size. Any material placed inside mental ray should take account of real world dimensions to get proper interaction with light sources. Since this box is just kind of randomly placed here with no specific dimension or correlation to a real world map or light source, we're going to turn this off and we should see what happens when we have a planar or flat map. If I rotate the object around, you see there's a kind of orange outline here that represents the map and you also see that the map is just being placed on the top. Whatever pixel is at the edge then streaks down the side. A planar map is ideal for wood where we would have the end cut and then the streaking along the sides. Now if I want to reposition a map, regardless of what kind of map it is, we'll roll open the UVW map and find its gizmo. And now all other aspects of map are locked out and we can carefully reposition and relocate the map. So for example with this planar map, one obvious one would be to slide it laterally so we can see how the map shifts around. Now there are other options for map inside the UVW map modifier. We could go to cylindrical, which basically places a map on here that looks like a cylinder. And similar to before, we could reposition that map up and down, and we can also rotate, uh, scale, and so forth. We also have a spherical map. We have the shrink wrap map. We have the box map, applies the map from six different directions. We have the face map, which places the map on each face that comprises the given geometry. And we have XYZ to UVW, which gets the map to correlate um, with the coordinate system. So in addition, as we um, select any kind of map, you'll notice that, uh, let's go ahead and close up the UVW map modifier. You see that we can make adjustments to the size of the map in any given direction and which really produces the same outcome but it's a different way of thinking it about it we can change the the tiling so you see I could change the tiling here so that um, in the U direction it, the tile gets uh, smaller or more frequent um, we can do the same when it comes to making adjustments so if I increase the number of tiles in this upper section it's because I'm making the tile smaller if I'm increasing the number of tiles in this lower section, it's because I'm increasing the frequency of tiles. So either one produces a similar outcome, it's just different ways of thinking. And UVW corresponds to the um, X, Y, and Z directions of a geometry. Now there's other ways to think about placing a, a map. We can also get the map to align with various axes of the geometry and we can manipulate the map as you see here now I've got it selected it's a way to bypass rolling out um, and then we can of course move and position and we can get the map to fit we can center the map and uh, and so forth now for a regular geometry the UVW map is fine and what you're going to do as a rule is check the map type that closely approximates the geometry that's being mapped with a more complicated map, we have to use something called a UVW Unwrap. And to view how that works, we'll look at a different file. In this file, I've placed the UVW map on a series of the teapot objects. Each of the teapot objects has a different version of the map. So for example, in the teapot version up here, we see the XYZ to UVW, or here we see the plane map applied, or here we see the box map applied. Note in each case that you see the orange bounding shape that represents the map proper. Here we see a rendering of the teapots with each of the maps on them. We have a clay wire rendering which uh, is an important uh, material that's used for testing geometries. I'll describe that at a later time. We have rendering by multi-sub object. We have 
then UVW maps applied um, as spherical, cylindrical, UVW plane, by mesh select, by shrink wrap, by box, by face, by XYZ. And then out here on the far left side, we see two versions of UVW unwrap. In general, when we see the renderings here, what we're trying to achieve is a kind of regularity about the deployment of the pattern or surface of the geometry that roughly corresponds to the polygons. If we look at the clay wire mesh pattern, we'll see that we have a kind of radiating wedge-like shape pattern to the polygons. So some of the better examples of the map being applied to the teapot show up in sphere and cylinder. The best outcome of the kind of regular maps is the UVW by mesh select and this requires us to use the mesh select and a whole series of UVW maps um, inside the modifier stack and by using mesh select we can get a specific map that goes with the spout that isn't at odds with a map that fits best with the pot proper or with a handle or with the top. If I locate the teapot that has the UVW by mesh select, we'll look inside the modifier stack here to find that there's a whole sequence of mesh select and a UVW map, mesh select and a UVW map, and so forth. If I go ahead and turn all of these off, all the way back up to the top, at the very bottom we find the edible poly and inside the edible poly teapot each of the components that comprise the teapot has had addressing placed on the features of the geometry let's get down here at the bottom in the edible poly and we'll move to the element level and you'll see if I select the handle inside the polygon material IDs that an ID of 4 has been set on this handle if I look at the top of the teapot, we see it has an ID of 2. If we look at the pot proper, we see an ID of 1. And if we see the spout, it has an ID of 3. By pre-addressing these elements that comprise the teapot, we can then easily select those elements and place specific maps on each one. When you first get the teapot open, it won't have this addressing, and so you'll have to force it on top of it. To do so, you would select the polygons, like the spout here in question, and we would type the value in the set ID box that we wanted to have. In this case, I wanted to have three. So I would type in three and press enter, and now this would have a polygon ID of number three for all of the polygons that are inside the teapot. An alternative way to place addressing is at the polygon level and we can select individual polygons like you're seeing um, me do here and notice all of these have an ID of 1. If you want to confirm what the address is of a bunch of polygons then you can also just select by ID and it'll select in this case all of the number ones. As we move up the modifier stack we'll see the mesh select modifier that's been added in here has just the teapot selected with just that selection then a UVW map has been added in the modifier stack and that UVW map is a spherical uh, UVW map. With a spherical map it's probably easiest to map around this um, generally spherical shape of the teapot and one can make adjustments by once again rolling out and selecting the gizmo of that UVW map and repositioning the, the sphere and to get it placed exactly the way you want. Of course, the sphere can be resized, and you can make adjustments to the tiling on the sphere as well. If we move up the modifier stack, we'll next find that the lid was selected, and once again, that was easily selected by using element and picking the top, and then we'll see the UVW map above that is also a spherical, but in this case, the sphere was positioned um, far below See, so that the curvature of the sphere more closely aligns with the teapot proper, and so forth. So as we move up the teapot, each of the elements of the teapot has its own unique map, allowing a more careful deployment of material over the surface. 
At the far end of this matrix of teapots, we find two teapots that have been um, mapped using the UVW unwrap map. The first version here is a UVW flatten, and this is simply applying the UVW unwrap modifier. And if we roll that out, we see we can gain access to various features of the geometry. And we also see that there are some other uh, parameters that can be adjusted for this given map. If I click on the edit button, we'll see that the teapot has been flattened so that now with it flattened we could take this information into Photoshop or some other photo editing program and we could paint onto the locations in the teapot uh, that we see here in this map so that when we bring them back into the software things like teapot test will show up exactly on the top of the pot. If we look at the other pot which also has a UVW map placed on it this one has been stretched out using something called the pelt. So if I go to edit, uh, you'll see that the map that's been created here looks much like an animal skin stretched out by a taxidermist. In the same fashion, now that this map has been stretched out, one can go into Photoshop or photo editing program and then paint into these locations so that when the map is applied to the geometry, we'd find anything painted, for example, like a stripe across this area of the pot, would show up exactly in that area of the pot. As you can see here, I've got a graphic inside Photoshop that I'll use to correlate with that unwrapped map for the teapot. The unwrapped map from the teapot, which is brought in as a layer inside Photoshop, now becomes the base over the top of which I paint information. The painted information that will end up correlating with bands around the teapot. In addition, we could add other information that might well suit a bump map, and we'll find displacement and relief inside the teapot when we render it. When we look carefully at the rendered teapot, we notice the stripe bands around the perimeter of the teapot, and we also see the relief on the surface. A subsequent video will cover in greater detail exactly how to create both the pelt and the unwrapped maps.